This video is sponsored by War Thunder. America, land of the free. So free that we need to manifest destiny our way to the stars. It's our birthright, and we're not gonna let anyone stop us. As these backwater aliens haven't created freedom, such as parking your ridiculously large truck across three parking spaces, or eating heart-destroying meals every single day. So today, we're gonna spread those freedoms, democratically, to the inferior alien species of the galaxy. At this point in the future, America has become an empire, with Joe Biden as its emperor. That doesn't look enough like him. Here, let me uh, add these in, and an ice cream cone there, and voila, it's a spitting image of our president. Joey B's first objective is to expand our empire's borders, and we entrust the ISS Mukianus to travel outside our solar system and shoot blinding science beams at random planets. While blinding the alien life, we actually met our first alien civilization. And we are given three options for our first words spoken to these bizarre creatures, ranging from slightly racist, to moderately racist, and finally really racist. Let's play it safe and go with moderately racist. With diplomacy out of the way, we expand our borders, building up a new space empire with the aid of some new American traditions. There are some good ones for us here, like science shit to buff up our military, mercantile to get more money to spend on our military, or supremacy, which makes our military stronger. And judging by how much we love to spend on our military, these three are great choices, but I'm gonna go with expansion to increase our borders, projecting our power out into the galaxy. Well, projecting until a point we collide borders with the alien civilization we uh, said some choice words to. Now, don't take this the wrong way, my alien compadres, but we need to strengthen our borders by upgrading our starbase with some new turrets. And it doesn't hurt to build up a few more warships while we're at it. Hey, it's not because of you, it's me. I'm the flawed one. I lied, it's mostly because of you and your disgusting lack of freedom. But in the inevitable case Emperor Joe Biden starts a war with y'all, we might as well expand our population by colonizing a nearby planet, initiating the birth of New Kentucky. You know, one Kentucky was already too many, but now we have twice the amount, so this really benefited no one. Or maybe it does, as our other neighbors started claiming some of our star systems. Let's check these guys out and oh god, you're ugly. And they really don't like us, but hey, on the plus side, we're improving relations with our Midwest charm. Besides their looks, I don't have much info on them, especially whether or not America can beat them in a war. So we're gonna set up a spy network to get some war info using our best spy, Fabius. But in the meantime, it wouldn't hurt to, you know. We continue colonizing, adding New Texas and New New York to our list of American planets. We pushed our borders further, bumping up against more alien empires. Speaking of alien empires, the galactic community was founded, and we discovered a whole host of nasty, freedomless, and shrimp-like life forms. But it isn't all bad. The first thing they wanted to vote on was the formation of the galactic market. So we can now spread American capitalism and burgers to all. Back to planning, as our spies have finished gathering information on our neighbors, and it looks like their navy is inferior to ours. Now I'm not saying we should preemptively strike them, but I am saying we have max influence and I, uh, misclicked. Claiming some systems that caused an international incident that might have put us on the path to war. Oh. Since we're now most likely going to war, it's probably a good idea to buff up our navy with some new tech. No, I'm not talking about adding lasers. Gross. I'm talking about American weapons like coil guns. There's nothing more American than hurling rocks faster than the speed of sound at an enemy that begs for mercy. Along with buffing our ships, New Kentucky has a use. They are building up an army of rednecks to liberate some alien planets. Looks like we found a purpose for Kentucky after all. We are ready to start this war with an attack from our main fleet, the Freedom Eagles. But I noticed the Star Dynasty lost some territory as they are at war with some blue anteaters. Now is the time to attack, so let's kick them while they're down. Thanks for the assist, Blue Man Group. 
We reinforce our claims of oil, uh, liberation, and declare war against these freedomless, squid-faced fox. The Freedom Eagles kick it off, liberating the first system by destroying the Savantian's starbase. After our small victory, we push forth to the next system, a system that contains a populated planet. Time to drop in the boys from Kentucky to fight the good fight and win us a planet. Congrats, Siltum's Fortress, you've just been liberated. We continue our conquest, claiming more systems and occasionally having our battle shots interrupted by notifications. And when we take more systems with the planets, the Kentucky Rednecks do their job and uh, take them unbelievably fast. Uh, good job, guys. And finally, we claim the last system within America's reach. I say our reach as the Blue Anteaters have taken a system cutting us off from the rest of the Star Dynasty's territory. To continue, I will need to get open borders from them, and they aren't really fans of freedom. But it doesn't hurt to ask. Huh? It worked. Oh wait, I'm stupid. I opened my borders to them. They still have theirs closed off. Well, I'm closing off my borders, and, um, uh, fuck you? Oh, they didn't particularly like that. Now I just have to wait around until I build up enough influence to claim their remaining systems and go back in for a sequel. And I'm waiting while having my systems claimed by another alien empire located to America's right. So we end our current war and turn our attention towards the Kemplaren Multistellar. Hey, you all saw what happened to the last guys. You sure you want to try that? I mean, the Tucky boys are just itching for another fight. They keep claiming our system, so I guess they won a war. And America will oblige. Before we rush in, we need to decide how to go about the invasion and the tactics we will employ. For this, I think it's best we study America's wars of the past using War Thunder. War Thunder is the world's premier vehicle combat game on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Command over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and warships as you exercise your own control over the USA's arsenal, alongside over 70 million other players, to evaporate anyone who opposes liberty. Personally, I just adore this game's x-ray view, so I can see exactly how I delivered democracy straight into my enemy's nervous systems. And don't forget to deliver that democracy in style, as War Thunder's amazing graphics and attention to detail reconstructs the sexiness of American tanks. So what are you waiting for, Patriot? Download War Thunder today for free. And if you are a new or returning player that hasn't played for at least six months, use the link pinned in the comments below for a massive bonus pack available to both PC and console players. Make sure to grab this pack as it includes the patriotic Eagle of Valor vehicle decoration, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium account. So act quickly because the pack is only available for a limited time. Speaking of limited time, we have a righteous invasion to commence. We build up our fleet and start unlocking the supremacy tradition. And when they actually declare war, we get to set our goal of humiliating them. But they quickly start taking America's systems, as our fleets are far away. I'm not actually worried about this fleet, more concerned about this 13,000 power fleet, which is stronger than the Freedom Eagles. But don't worry, as we'll back up the Eagles with our newest fleet, the Conveyors of Liberty. When our two fleets link up, they move in unison towards the enemy's combined fleets. But they make one critical error. They split up. I don't know why they did this, but they did. We take these, and hopefully we'll catch one without the other. But when we arrived in the nearest system, I noticed their large fleet is coming towards us. Um, okay. We'll take the free victory from your really stupid decision. <laughs> Instead of the Kaplar and Multi-Stellar, we should call you guys the Kaplar and Multi-Stupid. Yeah, that was a good one, me. High five. We now are going to split up our fleet, as they are kind of backdooring us with the smaller fleet. But in our engagement with the larger of the two enemy fleets, the Freedom Eagles are losing pretty hard, and they were destroyed. But the Conveyors of Liberty arrived to finish the job. I bet you all feel pretty humiliated right now. We progressively take back our territory until all is reclaimed. Unfortunately, we're at 100% war exhaustion, so we can't fight much longer. So we send an offer of peace and end this war. The war was so inspiring, a far away, super powerful empire watched with interest. Shedding tears at the sight of our freedom, they pledged to guarantee our independence and come to our aid in future wars. The wounds of our last war will never truly cease until the multi-stupid is eliminated. 
We forget our quarrel with the aliens over here and prepare for a massive war with the multi-stupid. But once again, they strike first with their uh, superior force. The conveyors of liberty intercept their first fleet and the fight's kinda too close to call. Uh-oh, reinforcements have arrived, but the conveyors of liberty have come out on top. Your forces don't seem that superior now, multi-stupid. We push for it, taking territory, but this time our war goal is to conquer them. The humiliation they feel is just an added bonus. The Kentucky boys once again fight and claim their planets, while our navy continuously wipes out their fleets, allowing us to take a lot of their sectors. Wait, is that a 30k power fleet? Rut row, that's not good. We only have two 10k fleets. We're not afraid of this fleet, but we're gonna buy some alloys real quick and build a few more ships. Oh shit, I wasn't paying attention and I allowed one of my fleets to be swarmed and they got instantly destroyed. They are now free to go on a rampage, retaking territory. Until they left? Um, okay then, we'll just take back the territory and no, oh, they're coming back and they brought another big fleet as backup. Luckily, at this moment, we once again were exhausted and forced to take a peace deal that granted us more territory than what we started with. Hold up the celebrations. We forgot a single territory. Well, I guess we'll take it back in nine years when we can attack again. I think the problem in our wars is that our military industrial complex isn't quite fleshed out as our alloy production is too low and ships take so many alloys to build. So we are expanding production with new factories. But I had a thought, do we really want to doom our great nation to infinite wars with inferior liberty-less aliens? Instead of fighting a bunch of small wars for a little bit of territory here and there, why don't we instead build up and fight one big war for all the marbles? So we begin using our new liberated citizens to colonize planets, planting the seeds of democracy. We built up worlds to support our mining and food production, while New Vermont is the Silicon Valley of space. With the aid of Vermont, we research new exciting technologies, upgrading our ship's offensive and defensive capabilities. So say goodbye to coil guns as we have gauss cannons now. And the multi-stupid once again declared war on us, which was perfect timing as we can now test out our new weapons. We once again took several systems, including some with planets, which was nice, but I was more happy that I took that one system in the middle of America's territory. Now, why do you all keep attacking me? Wait, did you change your name? <laughs> My bad, guys. They're no longer the Kaplarum multi-stupid. They are now the Kaplarum solidly stupid. Our newfound victory against the solidly stupid has united our diverse interstellar nation. Well, actually... All right, we had a little bit of trouble getting our new alien brothers on the Liberty train, but it's nothing a little harmony and fear campaigns can't fix. To promote unity between our existing human and new alien Americans, we have appointed our first alien government council member. Oh, and Emperor Joe Biden died a bit ago. I mean, we are 200 years since we started. So this is his grandson, Liberty Biden. Liberty Biden has been leading us into a new age of strength. The USA controls a quarter of the galaxy and our resources are overflowing in storage. But most importantly, our fleets are the strongest they've ever been. We now stand as a beacon of freedom across the galaxy. Wait, are we at war? It looks like our rock friends got themselves into a bit of a pickle and we were dragged in because of our defensive pact with them. Looking at our enemies, their fleets are uh, pretty strong and my allies' fleets are uh, not. Very cool guys, I'm really proud of you for this. It would be a very different situation if the war was contained at the top of the galaxy, but there happen to be fleets headed my way and they have a fleet power of oh my god. They start claiming my territory and invading my planets. And I really can't counter them until my fleets link up. And it looks like they have backup and bound. Oh, and it gets better. The 180k fleet turned into a 250,000 power fleet. I'm so fucked. I'm not really sure if my combined arms can beat them, but as George Washington once said before crossing the Delaware to go kill some Brits, ah, eh, fuck it.
So that went about as well as I thought it would, and my fleets have been decimated. My only course of action now is to retreat my remaining fleets and desperately build as many ships as I possibly can. We can only sit here powerless, as America's systems and planets are ravaged by these freedom haters. Once again, thanks for this. Our one saving grace is that we finished researching the holy grail of rock throwers, kinetic artillery. We update our ship designs and begin upgrading our existing fleets, while pushing our military industrial complex to its breaking point, building as many ships equipped with the kinetic artillery as possible. Hopefully this will give us an edge over our enemies. This war is almost over, and much of our territory has been claimed by our enemies. Their forces are overwhelming, and we are about to lose, as there is barely any American spirit left to fight this war. But I couldn't call myself an American if I didn't take what remains of our spirit and make a Hail Mary play to take back as much as I can. And this is as good of a time as any, as their fleets are making their way towards my ally, the Star Dynasty. Huh? I, that's weird that we're allies now on account of that scuffle we had in the past. We take back as much as we can, and send the Kentucky boys to retake New New Mexico. But our war was over. We had suffered a crushing defeat at the hands of the Freedomless. Yet, we didn't lose any territory? And we still have all our planets. I honestly thought we were about to lose a massive chunk of territory, and that our fleets were going to be annihilated. This war has taught us a very important lesson. Never have allies. They will drag you into wars, and all around, just be kind of a liability. So America is going it alone, free from the wars of others, so we can build up our forces to liberate the entire galaxy. We focused on our prosperity, building new megastructures to buff our science production and military. We even unlocked Titan-class ships, allowing us to build the most powerful fleets America has ever seen. But we as a nation are at an impasse, as there really isn't a great time to start a galactic war for liberation. Although, we do have the Ascension perk available to become the endgame crisis. This perk allows us to gain certain buffs centered around combat by, well, fighting the other factions. The trade-off is that eventually the entire galaxy will go to war with us. But we have to go to war with everyone anyway, as you see, there is a big confederation of these three empires. And they vassalize the Star Dynasty, the High Kingdom, the Solidly Stupid, and my old rock friends. This leaves only this fallen empire and these two small civilizations outside that confederacy. Now I could forge an alliance with the smaller civilizations, but watch this. This one has pathetic fleet power, and the other has pathetic fleet power. So I'm pretty much on my own against the confederacy. Well, now might be as good of a time as any for America to become the crisis. Oh, everyone disliked that. So my current strategy is to attack these guys first, to build up Menace. What is Menace? Menace is the points needed to climb the Crisis levels to gain those sweet buffs. And the best way to do it is by destroying everyone who hates freedom. Oh, and by being a naughty boy and breaching galactic law, which means the American tradition of indiscriminate bombing is back. <laughs> I got sent a strongly worded letter that I'm breaching galactic law, but what are you going to do about it? Oh, that's what you're going to do about it. That big scary confederacy I told you all about wants to take away our freedoms, or maybe stop the oncoming crisis, but probably the freedom. But let's be diplomatic about this. You're a bitch, you're ugly, and you legally purchase your copy of WinRAR. So we put up a fight, a fight I am hoping that will go long enough for me to build up enough menace to unlock menacing corvettes. These corvettes have skulls on them, so you know they're pretty tough, but besides the skulls, they take minerals to build instead of alloys. And we are producing a metric fu- I mean freedom unit fuckload. During our era of prosperity, we started building a matter decompressor, generating a thousand minerals a month for us, and it isn't even fully upgraded. We begin draining those minerals, producing ships willing to throw their lives away for liberty. Unfortunately, it isn't helping too much, and we're being pushed in on all sides of our border. And there is a massive amount of enemies outside our territory. I don't think my fleets are comparable. So every available fleet is being sent their way. But we don't have time to think about that as another war starts. 
The fallen empire on my border is upset that I wouldn't destroy my robots serving America. And they have a 300k fleet carving its way towards Earth. I don't have a way to stop it, as remember most of my fleets are over here. I can only watch as they quickly take my systems and eventually invade Earth. And we lost it, our home, the birthplace of freedom, democracy, and America. I have suffered defeats, but not like this. Unfortunately for the Fallen Empire, we have fleets inbound to destroy the 300k fleet and the Kentucky boys to take back the Earth. And with that, we finally reached Crisis Level 5, starting the galactic war we've been after. Everyone is now the enemy of America. But, one way or the other, the United States of America keeps growing. Well, actually, instead of growing, we're shifting our focus from liberating the galaxy through wars and invasion to an alternative strategy, on account of the whole losing every front situation. Once we reached level 5, the CIA cooked up this mega structure, the Aetherophasic Engine. It's not finished yet, but when we complete this structure, let's just say everyone in the galaxy will be liberated from their bodies. But it costs a lot of dark matter to advance through its construction stages. Luckily, America has Oppenheimered that shit and procured two star eaters. They, well, eat stars and produce dark matter, leaving behind a destroyed system and a black hole. We need to defend this machine, and to do so, we have pulled back most of our fleets, as we are willing to defend our home system at all costs. To gather more dark matter, we begin pushing back down towards New New Mexico, which we don't own anymore. Hey, don't worry, New New Mexico. We're only here to sacrifice you in the name of freedom. With each star destroyed, the Star Eaters gather more dark matter that will be used to advance the construction phases of our engine. We continue holding off the hordes of enemies, yet we eventually lost our matter decompressor, striking a vicious blow to our ship-making capabilities. Nevertheless, we continue to push into the southern territory of the Confederacy, consuming stars and leaving a field of black holes in our wake. Until a larger number of ships come through a wormhole. My apologies, I was mistaken. I meant to go harvest the stars over in the Star Dynasty's territory. We grew ever closer to completing the engine, but right outside of our shrunken territory is a Herculean fleet. It doesn't matter, because my fleets are willing to throw away their lives to defend the engine and freedom. But in an act that wasn't desperation at all, we begin cannibalizing our own stars to get the dark matter required for the final upgrade to the engine. Unfortunately, the Confederacy begins its assault, and us Americans are pushed to the brink. The only thing going through our minds is a few more days. We need to hold them for a few more days. Yet, we need a miracle to reach the finish line. And we got it! Meet our miracle, New Colorado. The massive fleet got a little preoccupied bombing the living shit out of the inhabitants of New Colorado. This happy accident bought us the time needed to finish the Aetherophasic engine, allowing us to achieve our goal of spreading freedom and liberty to the galaxy. Thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to sign up for free on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation using my link pinned in the comments or video description below to receive a massive bonus pack, including premium vehicles and other liberty-filled goodies. And if you enjoyed my video or are a really cool person, you should check out my last video where I got rich helping people in RimWorld by selling human skin jackets, delicious cannibal Italian food, and by solving the planet's blood shortage.